welcome to What Are You Reading, a podcast of the Public Library of Mount Vernon in Knox County. I'm Christy. And I'm Katie. And this month, we are celebrating the summer reading program, and the theme this year is um, All Together Now. So um, my mind instantly went, like, Katie and I were talking about it, and my mind instantly came up with, like, some Beatles lyric references, right? So we were, like, trying to think of, like, things that bring us all together, and we thought about music. Uh, something that all of us love. Mm-hmm. So our theme this month, we picked books that involve music. Mm-hmm. Um, so this month I chose Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I chose Shine. It's a YA book by Jessica Jones. Awesome. Well, I kind of um, got excited when Katie picked hers because I am a K-pop stan. So I'm a huge fan of K-pop and have been for a really long time. And the name sounded so familiar. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned to me, like, I think she was in a K-pop band, Mm -hmm. something like that. And the minute I saw her picture, I said, oh, my gosh, she was in Girls' Generation, one of Mm -hmm. my favorite Korean pop bands. Um, So how how was it? What do you you think? Um, It's interesting. It is definitely a YA book. Um, Just because there has that... um, Dating myself a little bit, but, you know, that Mean <laughs> Girls mm-hmm, type of thing going on. Okay. Um, I am, I'm not a K-pop fan because I haven't been exposed to it. Sure. So, um, I, I would find it interesting to have you read this and tell me, like, yeah. what your experience will be. So, it is really interesting um, because I didn't know that. If any of this is true, those poor K-pop stars. Mm -hmm. Because our main character, her name is Rachel. Um, She got discovered when she was like 11. And um, she's from New York, but she is Korean. Mm -hmm. So um, her whole family uproots everything in New York and moves to Seoul so that she can train to be a K-pop star. Wow. Which she may not ever get to do. Yeah. So when we start the book, she has been in this training process for six years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So um, she's, in American time, she's 16. In Korean time, she's 17. Because I learned in the book that you are a year, you are a year old the day you are born mm-hmm. in Korea. So you're a year older than you actually than you would be if you were here. Oh, sure. Um, so and she doesn't get to live the life that all of the trainee other trainees do. Like they all live in basically like a sorority house. Okay. Um, and they live, eat and sleep K pop. Wow. Um including some really questionable things like they have to get weighed like Mm. once a week Mm -hmm. and um some definitely toxic environment type things okay yes this Um, definitely triggers yes in this book yes Mm -hmm. um although as far as i've gotten the weighing hasn't happened like it doesn't happen on the page but Mm -hmm. you do know that it's there okay um but Basically, um, Rachel is kind of the golden child. All of the um, all the execs at DB, which is the um, the label where she is basically working without any money, mm. um, and they expect big things of her, mm. and therefore all the other girls that are in the program are trying to set her up. Okay. Um, And something does happen where one of the girls actually drugs Rachel. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The night before, a big, um, periodically, the executives of DB will come together and you have to perform for them. So they decide if they want to keep you in the program or not. Mm -hmm. So um, Rachel does something super out of character and goes to the trainee house, which her mother is like, no. You're, you're going to live a normal life Mm -hmm. and you can do this on like weekends. Um, so she sneaks out and does that and it ends up being a party instead of a training session and they force her into drinking some champagne that had something in it. Uh So the next morning she wakes up late 
So she's not polished at all mm-hmm. for this big meeting. Um, and she ends up making a complete fool of herself. And even um, she gets sick on a major K-pop star who is there. Oh, no. So, um, and his name is Jason Lee. Um, he isn't a trainee. He is a K-pop star with DB. Um, and that's where we get a little bit of romantic entanglement. Okay. Um, but he is way polished. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to know at this point, is he showing the real him mm-hmm. or is he playing a part? Mm-hmm. And is he really interested in Rachel or is it just part of his persona? Ooh. So, yeah. yeah. And there are some um, Korean words in here that I did have to... Some of them I looked up. Some of them I got from context. Cool. Um, I love that there's a little bit of Korean culture. Like, mm-hmm. learning about the age difference and using some Korean words mm-hmm. and getting to know kind of, like, how the K-pop system, like, the mm-hmm. industry works. Because from what I know mm-hmm. of being a fan... And Jessica being an actual member of a huge K-pop group, multiple K-pop groups, actually, and mm-hmm. solo projects, it does sound like she's writing from experience mm-hmm. because we've we've heard a lot of, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of things that go along with that, like the weight things, the, um, you know, constant need to keep up a certain persona that mm-hmm. seems to ring true in the actual industry itself outside of fiction. Yeah, because um, a lot of her classes involve, like, in one of them, it was, like, making your eyebrows look a certain way. Wow. And, of course, you have to do it yourself. Uh-huh. And she gets a little crazy with mm-hmm. the tweezers. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and they have, like, media training. And that's mm-hmm. where she is the weakest. Okay. So... She ends up having to go on the defensive because she makes a fool of herself. And Mm -hmm. they didn't cut her, Mm -hmm. but it was like... That was close. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's a good thing we decided not to cut anyone today because Uh you would have been cut. Well, I think it's cool, too, that we've got a Korean-American perspective in Mm -hmm. this book. So I'm sure that plays a big part of it, too, of her growing up here in the States and then moving to Seoul, what... Yeah, that is a culture shock, I'm sure, mm-hmm. lifestyle-wise. Yeah, and it cr- creates some tension with her family mm-hmm. because, like, her mom was on the tenure track in New York. Wow. And had to get a new professor job, and she basically had to start over. Mm-hmm. Um, her dad is secretly taking night classes because um, he runs a gym. Okay. And the gym isn't making any money because... It's Korea and not Mm -hmm. New York. Yeah. So, um, and she has a little sister that um, seems to be super enamored with K-pop, but Mm -hmm. she's trying to make friends. Mm -hmm. She had to start over, too. Wow. So, um, but one of the reasons that, and I thought I really liked this about the book, um, the reason that Rachel kind of fell into K-pop was she watched the music videos with her mom and she said that was the first time that she felt pride that she was Korean. Wow. Like she was a yeah. part of something. Yeah. Instead of being that Korean American. Absolutely. So yeah, that's, awesome. that's one of the reasons why she wants to succeed so badly yeah. because she thinks K pop has been really good for her. Yeah. But it's Right. We're seeing now. a dark side. Yes. A darker side, too. Yes. And now that she's um, 17, because mm-hmm. she's in Korea, this is kind of her last chance. Because mm-hmm. once you reach a certain age, yeah, it's like you're not... You're out. You're not going to make K-pop ever. Yeah. I think it's similar, and I'm going to age myself, too, because growing up, we had, like, Justin and Brittany, mm-hmm. uh, like, Mickey Mouse Club, you know, where Christina, all those people... So you saw them being trained in a very similar way. Mm-hmm. Of course, we didn't know any of the behind the scenes stuff at that time. Mm-hmm. But the, these kids would get into the industry and be trained and raised mm-hmm. to be stars. So it's kind of interesting to see the similarities between that and American culture and how like Korea's kind of like homogenized it 
mm-hmm. into like a really finely tuned machine where these places like DB in real life, there's Jessica is attached to SM entertainment. So what I was thinking, we were like, oh, well, maybe that's where she got that from in the book. Mm-hmm. But they've, you know, set up these record labels where that's what they do. They tra- come in as a trainee and they train mm-hmm. you for all of these years and then you'll be ready for debut, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's a solo artist or with a band. So it sounds really awesome. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm excited for her as like an author. And I know yeah. book two is already out. Book two is right? already out. Um, I haven't looked into it enough to know mm-hmm. if there's going to be a third book or mm-hmm. or what. So um, we'll just have to stay tuned yeah, and see. see what happens yeah love it yeah it sounds really interesting and yeah especially as a k-pop fan like and i love k-dramas and all that stuff so. yeah there's some yeah. k-drama stuff in here Ooh. too so um that's something else that i don't know a whole lot about but yeah it does kind of make me wonder um if maybe she merged the like k-pop industry and mm-hmm. like a K drama storyline. I could totally see that because I've been trying to get Katie to watch some (laughs) forever. (laughs) Um, Because there's a lot of content on like Netflix and stuff like that Mm -hmm. now. So it is really accessible to us here in America. Um, Because I'm like, I know you'll love it. So you got to check some out. So Mm -hmm. one of these days, we'll we'll keep you guys updated. (laughs) (laughs) Well, mine is similar in the music world. Mm -hmm. Um, but we get a really organic story. So very different Mm -hmm. than, than what you were dealing with. Um, and I know you guys are probably already familiar. If you haven't heard, um, Daisy Jones and the Six is an Amazon show as well. Um, it was also in Reese Witherspoon's book club. So I know it's, it's got like a lot of hype. Um, and the Amazon show has done really well, super popular. Um, Daisy Jones and the Six follows Daisy Jones and a band called The Six. Um, And what's really great about this book is that it is told through an interviewer's perspective. Mm -hmm. So we are getting interviews with not only Daisy Jones, members of the band, interviews with friends, family, people that were in the industry. And I think that what I've read and what I got from this book was very my idea of maybe Fleetwood Mac okay. type inspiration um, that Taylor Jenkins Reid was kind of pulling from because we have a really dynamic front woman. Um, Daisy is born into the upper class in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Like she's all her parents are um, an artist and a model who are very influential, in, you know, in the 60s, 70s culture. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she's already born very silver spoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's beautiful. She has this gorgeous red hair and these big eyes and she's born with a voice. Mm-hmm. So she um, gets a name for herself really quickly, very young. So um, definitely trigger warnings in this as well for SA, um, you know, child abuse type things. Because she's 14 years old walking the streets of Hollywood, mm. getting into clubs, um, you know, creating relationships, um, having very adult relationships at sure. a very, very young age. So mm-hmm. 14, 15, she's already in the 70s, embroiled into this lifestyle of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So Mm -hmm. um, definitely be aware of that. Um, But she, as she's kind of developing this persona for herself, Mm -hmm. uh, because she she needs something. Her parents are very busy, popular Mm -hmm. people. So there's a lot of abandonment issues. Mm -hmm. Um, She's really left to fend for herself. Sure. Um, And early on in the book, we get a lot of information about her being gone. She'd moved in with a friend for a month. Her parents had no idea she was gone. Wow. And said nothing to her when she came home. When that, uh, you know, didn't work out and she moves home, they're like, oh, you're here, you know? So, you know, we get very early on that Daisy is her own creation. Mm -hmm. Um. She has, like, a solo career. She's kind of starting out with wanting to write her own music. But as we see with a lot of, like, K-pop or Mm -hmm. what we experience here in America, oh, we don't want you to write your own songs. Here's some stuff that we've written for you we think you would sound great on. Mm -hmm. So Daisy's unhappy. Her album's not doing as well as it should be. And at the same time, we're getting information about this group called The Six, who is 
also having a lot of issues. They have an album that comes out that kind of hits, does okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, we're in the 70s. So, you know, we're talking, like, kind of Leonard Skinnerty, like, Fleetwood Mac, obviously, mm-hmm. um, vibes. And um, they end up coming together uh, just – you know, circumstances, throw them together, sharing a manager. Mm -hmm. Um, And the lead singer of the six, Billy, notices that she's got this voice and they really wanted another female in the band. They have a female keyboardist Mm -hmm. and they really wanted a woman that could sing with Billy and create that like beautiful harmony that Mm -hmm. would really get everybody interested in their sound. Mm -hmm. So Daisy joins the band and that's when we get just... All kinds of craziness. Mm -hmm. Everything that you could possibly think. If you've ever, you know, (laughs) thought about the recording of rumors, like, you know, (laughs) or, you know, watched Stevie, you know, Lindsay, their relationship. um, That's what we get here. So we have just all of the things that come along with infighting, um, amazing album sales, world tour. Mm -hmm. And of course, much like the Beatles, they break up at the height of their fame. Mm -hmm. So we get kind of a backstory as to why that might have happened. And we do get a lot of um, reveals throughout. Okay. Um, We have an unnamed interviewer. And we find out some things as we're moving along about who this person is. Okay. That's writing this book and conducting the interviews. So I don't want to spoil anything for anybody because definitely want want you to pick this up if you haven't already watched the show haven't picked up the book. Um, I haven't watched the show yet. So I'm kind of sad about that. I don't have any Amazon Prime. Um, so <laughs> I haven't got to watch it yet. And mm-hmm. I want to know if some of the things in the book happen in the show too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, because it's written in that interview style, mm-hmm. do you think it's like the reason that the interviews are happening is because of that hor- horrific breakup? Yeah, I really think that there's so much interest Mm -hmm. in what really happened, Mm -hmm. you know, like what happened behind the scenes, what really transpired between Daisy and Billy and some of the other members of the band. Um, The keyboardist goes by Karen Karen and, you know, like what happened in that dynamic that Mm -hmm. made them separate? Mm -hmm. Um, And, of course, there's a lot of drama going on with the other members of the band as well. Sure. That's pulling them away. You know, family, fame, those things don't really mix well together. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are having that. You're growing up. How do you rectify a rock star lifestyle but also, like, starting a family? That's kind of a big big topic, too, Mm -hmm. in the book is um, having children um, getting married, how does that work into this jet set lifestyle? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't. And so that causes a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's definitely kind of like, um, behind the music okay. again, dating myself, like VH1 behind the music, you know? <laughs> so it definitely gives you that feel that you're watching a show like that, like mm-hmm. a documentary series. Which is kind of what she's writing is, Mm -hmm. you know, we're going to interview all these people. We're going to try to get the true story of how Daisy Jones and the Six broke up. Okay. And we get a really interesting telling from so many different points of view. Mm -hmm. And I do want to mention that we kind of talked about that with Cloud Cuckoo Land. Like Mm -hmm. the different perspectives and jumping Mm -hmm. and how confusing that could be. Mm -hmm. This was just such an easy read. Oh, good. I, I read it in like two days. Okay. It just was so fast to, it, it immersed you right away. Mm-hmm. You knew exactly who was talking, what they were talking about, and the timeline flowed really nicely. Um, so I really liked that. And I'll show you guys a little bit of an example. I'm sorry if you're just listening to us, but um, I did want to kind of show you how the book is broken up. So we'll get a title page here. Like this says, the groupie Daisy Jones, 1965 to 1972. Okay. So we know when we, who we're with and when we are, which is awesome. Yeah. So within that chapter, we're going to have the person's name that's being interviewed. 
Mm-hmm. And we're going to have them talking about that specific time period in that person. Oh, okay. So other things are going to come up, obviously. But mm-hmm. we know that that is going to specifically be about Daisy and the things that were happening around Daisy. Okay. And is it more or less chronological? Yeah, it really is. And we'll, we'll kind of go into memories sometimes. So mm-hmm. even though we're talking about 1962, we're going to kind of jump a little bit ahead because that person is now aged. And so they're remembering what was going on at that time. So you're going to get little hints about what might happen in the future, Mm -hmm. but they're going to be prefacing that by, well, here's why this is kind of important Mm -hmm. because from this time to this time, this is what was happening. Sure. So I really liked that. Yeah. We had like an explanation of when we were, who we were with and why it was important to our story as a whole Mm -hmm. about what happened to the band. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, it's great. I, yeah, I loved it. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. And, if, you know, I liked it so much that I ended up borrowing another book that we have by the author because she, it's just great, great yeah. writing. So, um, and it mentions the seven husbands of Eve- Evelyn Hugo, which was the next one that I picked up that we oh, had okay. here. So, yeah, yeah, very great. So, yeah, cool. 10 out of 10 do you recommend. Especially right now, since we're dealing with, you know, music and, um, you know, togetherness and all that stuff Mm -hmm. with the summer reading program. I thought these were a great one. Yeah, two very different genres of music and yet very similar life experiences. It's pretty cool to think about how different they were. But, yeah, it's the music industry, right? And Mm -hmm. we don't get to see... That side of it. We just get the product. Yeah. So it's really nice to kind of, even though these are fictionalized tellings, um, I think we really can pull from things that we we hear in real life mm-hmm. after something happens. A band breaks up or, you know, a, a member unfortunately will pass away or something. And mm-hmm. then you get the real story of, hey, here's what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we enjoyed this one. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was a good one. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. And catch us next time with another episode. Of course, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And remember, these are available for pickup here at the um, any of the branches. Just let us know if you're interested. Stop in. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do read them, definitely let us know what you thought. Mm-hmm. So until next time, bye-bye. Bye.